Good morning, everyone. Um, so we are probably very still quite in shock from what happened in uh, Paris last uh, Friday night. And um, today I want to try to discuss our book, um, our reading, uh, which is excerpted from Richard Gruzin's uh, book, <clears throat> Pre-Mediation, After Affect and Mediality After 9-11, by um, thinking, uh, also how to think, uh, through the um, uh, media uh, representations of the Paris uh, shocking events. And so I'm going to do that uh, quite uh, easily by excerpting three significant quotes from the reading and, um, and then asking you three simple questions in relation to Paris and the role of media. So, um, what is important about um, this text? So, this is Richard Cruzin, the same author of um, Remediation, a book which was authored by Bolter and Cruzin, whereas this is a book that he authored himself as a single author um, and that he published about uh, 10 years after uh, Remediation. And so, he introduced a new theoretical term, which is pre-mediation. And so on page four, he says, pre-mediation is not to be confused with prediction. Pre-mediation is not about getting the future right, but about proliferating multiple remediations of the future, both to maintain a low level of fear in the present and to prevent a recurrence of the kind of tremendous media shock that the United States and much of the network world experience on 9-11. So he's saying that after 9-11, a new logic of media emerged, right? Um, uh, Remediation was published in 1999. Um, after 9-11, Grusin began observing a new logic through which media operate. And so he says in Remediation, we offer the following restatements of remediation as the mediation of mediation, as the inseparability of mediation and reality as and as remedy or, or reform, and we have discussed this extensively um, uh, in the past couple of weeks. So, remediation, he says, can also be restated in three ways as the remediation of future media forms and technologies, as the remediation of future events and effective states, and as the extension of social technical media networks into the future. Right? So, he's now thinking through the power this, these media technologies have to anticipate the future, but not so much as getting it right, as he said, as predicting what effectively will happen, but as um, putting us um, as ourselves in the position of keeping our fear, level of fear, low under control, because uh, terrorist attacks have the ability to shatter our a sense of safety, our coordinates of reality, how we exist in the world, um, especially if you live, say, in a city like Paris. Should I go out tonight? Should I, should I go uh, to work? Um, what about going to the stadium or doing things that I used to do on a regular basis, right? How should I act? And this is what many Americans, of course, experienced uh, after 9-11. So a third quote, he says, there are two ways, now here is building from uh, a famous essay by Walter Benjamin, and he says there are two ways to look at the future. One which operates on a model of prediction, which imagines the future as settled or to be settled, as moving from possible to definite, and another which imagines the future as imminent in the present, as consistent of potentialities that impact that impact or affect the present, whether or not they ever come about, right? This is what, what I just said, should I go out now, right, as opposed to what will abstractly happen in the future. That fear of what it might happen has already an actual power on how I'm acting now, in the very moment in which I'm thinking about the possibility of a threat. So, premediation imagines multiple futures which are alive in the present, which always exist as not quite fully formed potentialities or possibilities. So, I was just checking the New York Times this morning, 
and you can see this unfolding story of the um, hunting terrorists, uh, especially this is the main story uh, right now in Brussels, right? The, the manhunt that focuses on uh, Brussels, uh, but all the pages dedicated to uh, ISIS, of course. And then I found this uh, um, editorial, what will come after Paris, right? And so here you can see, like, if you read the article, it really doesn't say anything that um, is not really predicting the future. It's more talking about, you know, the next steps of the world leaders as they coordinate the war in Syria um, and so forth, right? But this orientation, right? And you can see it also from the picture, right? Like, we are now in this moment of shock of trying to figure out what will go on and the media immediately build on that uncertainty and try to assuage our fears so my questions are uh, one the first question is pragmatic how did you learn about the paris attacks did you check facebook or maybe you heard uh, from a friend uh, through your phone somebody texted you or from somebody maybe who even lives in Paris, or did you feel the need uh, immediately, um, and perhaps not just, or did you feel the, the, to turn to the mainstream media? Uh, do you think that this uh, future orientation of media, right, which is also about their attempt to turn the unknown, the big questions that uh, hover in our mind into the known, as effects, immediate effects on our state of mind and being, and this I'm talking about the fact that the media try to uh, pretend to predict the future so as to keep us, um, in a certain sense, calm, right? Um, and my f third question is, is a provocation. Wouldn't be perhaps all freer human beings, right, if we were not so glued to our media, not so concerned about the unpredictability, right, therefore not so anxious, and would merely enjoy life as it is, right? So what is the relationship between our anxiety and what the media provide us uh, to respond to our anxieties?